It's the year 2007, in the month of August coming up, and I look at the calendar, and it's the 103rd anniversary of the birth of Bill Basie. He was born on August 21st. And in the month of August, on the jazz image, we uh, take the weekend to salute his memory and uh, people that associated with him, people who like what he did. And on the line is a percussionist by the name of Ed Shaughnessy. Drums and percussion and uh, studied uh, timpani vibes and tabla and things like that. And a man with a sense of humor. He had to be in heaven when he joined George Shearing at one point, who was a storyteller in his own right. Ed Shaughnessy, welcome in. Thank you, Lay. It's a great pleasure to be with you and your fine show. Well, thank you for taking time. And I'm curious, how did you get involved with Bill Basie? Well, it's a very interesting and kind of fun story. Uh, Basie in the 60s had one of the really great big band drummers named Sonny Payne. He was a friend of mine. I admired him a great deal. But Sonny had some alimony problems when he would come into New York State. And uh, to avoid those problems, uh, he wanted to stay out of New York State for a number of years, although he could work with Basie anywhere else. So my phone rings one day, and it's Basie's manager, and he said, Hey, Ed, we'd like you to make an album with us down at Fine Sound Studio here in New York City uh, over the next week or two. And uh, I'm saying right away I got concerned. Oh, what's the matter? Is Sonny sick? He said, no, Sonny's got a few legal things that's going to keep him out of the state for a while. And we want you to do this. Bill Basie said that uh, he personally is asking it as a favor. So I had to take off a couple of days on The Tonight Show with Doc's band. And Doc said, of course, oh, listen, it's such a privilege to work with Basie. Of course, you can take those couple of nights off. And uh, that's the way it worked out. And then it also worked out that the first album was so successful with sales that I got the call, oh, I don't know, I, I think it might have been six months later, to uh, do another album. And uh, then I succeeded in doing perhaps, I think, three other albums during the 60s, all due, really, to uh, Sonny and a few legal entanglements. <laughs> so if I would see Sonny outside of New York on the road sometimes, which I did, I would say, hey, pal, I love your legal entanglements. And he would say, I will kill you if you say another word. <laughs> and he was a lovely uh, guy, wonderful gentleman. And we used to have a lot of fun together. But that's actually how the door got opened for me. And uh, it was probably one of the greatest privileges of my life. Because Basie told me uh, after the first date, the first record date, uh, he pulled me over and said, you fit the band like a glove. You're my secret weapon. And I went home feeling about 20 feet tall. Ed Shaughnessy, will you stay with us? I'd like to talk to you more. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Ed, uh, tell us about the environment and the climate of the Basie Band, your uh, observations. Thank you. I'd like to because it was a very interesting climate. It was a climate of the ultimate respect for the leader in a quiet way. And uh, he he commanded uh, his band in a quiet way. He was known to be a quiet man. And yet they tell me if he looked up over his little spectacles at somebody, that was worse than somebody else yelling at them because he didn't do it unless it was for some very good reason. A good dear friend of mine for 40 years is Snooky Young, the great trumpeter, who played with Basie for many years, and he said, Ed, we were so proud to be members of the Basie band, including Looking Sharp and everything else on the bandstand, and he said, we respected Basie so much that we sort of took care of our own discipline, and he didn't have to do too much. But what I'd like to tell you, Lay, because it's, it's a funny story, is that when we were doing the first tune of the first album, uh, we finished it, and Basie said to the engineers, how did that sound? It sounded very good out here. And the voice of the producer, who shall be nameless, said, well, uh, Bill, I thought it sounded good, but I think we'll do with a lot less drums. And he took his fist, picture him now sitting at the piano with the white yachting cap. He took his fist and he went bam on the piano. And at the time he went bam on the top of the piano, he went Arr! like a lion. And the whole place 
froze. I found out later he rarely, if ever, did things like this. The whole place froze, and he leaned over to the mic and said, Mr. Engineer, I've got Mr. Shaughnessy here to play the way he plays in my band. That's why he's here. Your job is to get the sound. Do we understand each other? And believe me, for the next 12 hours of recording over a week, another another word was said. That took care of it. Ed Shaughnessy, what a pleasure to sit in with you long distance and get a picture of the environment of the Basie Band and leadership. Okay. 